Today is Tuesday, September 26th. We're just a few days away now from a possible government shutdown. We'll explain where things stand, including the options lawmakers are considering, and why each one is facing challenges. Also, the historic action President Biden plans to take today, and how former President Trump is doing something similar tomorrow, who they are both supporting and trying to win over before Election Day. Plus, a medical breakthrough that could lead to the first standard way to diagnose long COVID. Amazon's multi-billion dollar investment into AI and a reboot of The Office. We'll tell you the details we know so far. Those stories and more news to know coming up. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. Congress is back in session with just a few days to reach an agreement or else the government shuts down. Though at this point, it's really not clear what that agreement could be since lawmakers have different ideas about how to move forward. For Republican House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, it comes down to a tough choice. Risk a shutdown or risk losing his role as speaker. The most conservative Republicans say they'll file a motion to remove McCarthy from his speakership if he works with Democrats who they consider corrupt or if he supports any kind of short-term measure that does not include deep spending cuts. They also want a measure to promise to address things like what they say is the weaponization of the Justice Department and so-called woke policies at the Pentagon. Former President Trump has also encouraged conservative Republicans to oppose any spending bill that does not defund criminal investigations into him. But those options likely won't have a chance at passing the Democrat-led Senate or getting President Biden's signature. Another option comes down to a group of moderate Republicans who say they're open to joining Democrats in supporting a short-term fending measure without involving the speaker at all. For it to work, at least five Republicans would have to sign what's called a discharge petition, along with all of the Democrats who already have one sign. But going around the speaker is not something that happens very often since it's controversial. In fact, The Hill calls it an act of political mutiny. Still, support is apparently growing. If that does work, the moderate Republicans say they'll be able to vote for a resolution that funds the government at current spending levels until January, includes $24 billion for Ukraine and $16 billion for disaster relief, and it gives the Biden administration the ability to more quickly expel migrants who enter the country illegally. But it doesn't include what the hard right flank of their party considers priorities. Then there's a third option, and that's what McCarthy is working on long-term bills with deep spending cuts. Even supporters say they likely won't be able to get the long-term bills approved in time, if at all, since they usually take weeks of floor debate after making it out of committees. Still, at this point, McCarthy sees that as his best option. Reports say he's hoping, by at least trying to move forward on the long-term bills, he'll be able to convince his whole party to agree on a short-term measure by the end of this week. Otherwise, the government shuts down this Saturday, October 1st meaning millions of federal workers will have to go without pay. And it could impact things like health inspections, food stamps, housing assistance, student loans, small business loans, and a lot more. So, to be continued. Today, President Biden is becoming America's first sitting president to join a picket line. He's planning to go to Michigan today to stand in solidarity with auto workers who are striking against Detroit's big three car manufacturers. Biden says he stands by auto workers' demands for higher pay, among other things. But some Republicans are actually blaming his administration for the strike, saying he's trying to shut down their whole industry. And former President Trump is expected to deliver that message to automakers himself when he visits and holds a rally for union members tomorrow. The difference in opinion mostly comes down to electric cars. Biden says they're the future of the American auto industry and has supported grants and loans to help retrofit and retool facilities in the United States. While Trump has said they're an enemy of the U.S. working class, in part because they do require fewer workers to build than traditional cars. It's not clear who has more support among auto workers at this point, since polls have shown the opinions are pretty much split. During the last election cycle, the United Auto Workers Union endorsed President Biden, but it hasn't picked a candidate this time around, at least not yet. Of course, Michigan is an important swing state, too, that each Biden and Trump have won once before. But there are actually auto workers all over the country. Already, the strike has expanded to 20 states and could expand further if a deal is not reached soon. 
Dozens of ailing railroad bridges and tracks are about to get repairs and upgrades. And businesses and rail commuters are expected to start seeing the benefits as soon as next year. The Biden administration announced this week it awarded more than $1.4 billion to 70 railroad projects in 35 states. It's the largest federal investment in rail safety upgrades in the nation's history. The White House says the projects will make American rail safer, more reliable, and more resilient, while increasing capacity of both freight and passenger railroads and bringing economic benefits to the U.S. But these announcements don't come without their critics. Some lawmakers have argued against government assistance, saying the largest railroads have made billions of dollars in profits and should be able to pay for the upgrades themselves. But the largest railroads say they need federal subsidies since they provide a public service and already spend billions of dollars a year in upkeep. Well, the recipients of these new grants will have to show they are also contributing funding to the improvement projects, and work should get going pretty soon. That work will include track improvements, bridge repairs, rail crossing upgrades, better methods for carrying hazardous materials, and more. More news is still coming up, but first, a quick break for our sponsor, Nutrafol. I've actually been using Nutrafol for almost two years now. I'm sure a lot of moms listening can relate to the fact that I started noticing changes in my hair after giving birth. But then a good friend, as well as my personal dermatologist, recommended Nutrafol. I was so excited to know there was an option I could actually take postpartum and that is physician formulated using drug-free science-backed ingredients so you get the most reliable results. And because I later did actually notice visibly thicker, healthier hair after using Nutrafol, I've continued to take it. No matter your life stage, Nutrafol has four unique formulas to support women. You can find out what type of Nutrafol products are best for you really easily on their website. Simply take their hair health wellness quiz and you'll get a personalized plan for better hair growth through their whole body health approach. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering the Newsworthy listeners $10 off your first month's subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code NEWSWORTHY. Find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com with the promo code NEWSWORTHY. That's Nutrafol.com, promo code NEWSWORTHY. Now back to the news. For more than three years now, scientists and doctors have struggled to fully understand what's known as long COVID, and there's still no standard way to diagnose it. But now there's new evidence that's being called a breakthrough. A new study in the journal Nature found patients with long COVID have distinct immune and hormone imbalances at least four months after their infection compared to those without it. Specifically, they found those with long COVID had significantly lower levels of the stress hormone cortisol, which helps give people a feeling of alertness. They also found irregular levels of different types of immune cells and that dormant viruses had reactivated. Researchers say these findings confirm that long COVID is a biological disease. And secondly, that the results could be the first step to eventually developing reliable blood testing protocols for diagnosing long COVID. More research is still needed, But experts say this could even be a step toward more personalized treatments in the future. The perks of Costco memberships apparently go beyond the warehouses. Now members get healthcare discounts too. Costco teamed up with a healthcare marketplace startup called Sesame. Through the startup, Costco members can get virtual doctor's visits for $29, virtual mental health sessions for $79, and a 10% discount on other telehealth and in-person services though the company doesn't take insurance. This is a new venture for Costco, but of course it all follows similar investments by Walmart, Amazon, CVS, and Walgreens. Amazon is now the latest company making a multi-billion dollar move into the world of artificial intelligence. The company announced this week it will invest up to $4 billion in Anthropic. It's a top competitor to the company behind ChatGPT called OpenAI. Amazon says Anthropic will now use Amazon's data centers, cloud computing platform, and chips to build, train, and deploy future AI models. And Amazon is getting a minority stake in the company. Anthropic already has some other high-profile backers, including Google and Salesforce. But Amazon's investment is the biggest yet, in Anthropic at least. Microsoft has made the biggest investment overall, pouring $13 billion into OpenAI. Speaking of which, OpenAI just announced some upgrades to its chatbot this week, For starters, it's giving ChatGPT a voice, so it's no longer just text-based. So, for example, you could verbally ask ChatGPT to make up a bedtime story on the spot with just a few prompts to guide the narrative. Or more simply, you could verbally ask it a question and get a spoken answer back. Another upgrade? 
ChatGPT users will now be able to search for answers using just images, like you could upload a picture and ask ChatGPT to explain what it is. For now, the new features are only rolling out to those who pay for ChatGPT, but OpenAI says everyone else will get them soon. One of the most beloved comedies for watching on repeat could be getting some new episodes soon. Reports say a reboot of The Office is coming. And the co-creator of the American version, Greg Daniels, is apparently behind this one, too. There's not an official cast list out there yet, so it's not clear if big stars like Steve Carell or John Krasinski would be involved. But just last year, when Daniels was talking about a possible reboot, he said he didn't think he'd bring the same characters back. It's also not clear where he's planning the reboot to go. The original series was on NBC, and reruns are now on NBC's Peacock. But so far, the network has not commented on this news. That's it for the main news today. So now it's time for Trivia Tuesday, when we ask a different trivia question every week. But first, today's episode is brought to you by Trust in Will. I've had a lot of big life milestones lately, from having our child a couple years ago to recently buying a home. And while these things bring us so much joy, they also made me realize we need to do more to secure our future and our child's future. And Trust and Will made this process so easy. My husband and I recently sat down to put together our first will, and I was surprised by how simple yet thorough the process with Trust and Will was. We really liked the guided format. In fact, it only took us about 20 minutes from home, 20 minutes to have peace of mind for years to come. Each will or trust is crafted to be state-specific and customized to your specific needs. Everything from care wishes to nominating guardians for our child, power of attorney, and more. It also ensures that we've now prepared and organized our documents in one place. Of course, bank-level encryption is also appreciated. So gain peace of mind today with Trust and Will. Get 10% off plus free shipping of your estate plan documents by visiting trustandwill.com newsworthy. That's 10% off and free shipping at trustandwill.com newsworthy. Okay, now back to Trivia Tuesday. Today's trivia question is, why are school buses yellow? You can play along with us in our weekly roundup email that comes out each Friday. Simply sign up to get it at thenewsworthy.com slash email, or you can find the link in today's episode notes. As for last week's trivia question, how far away can the human eye see? The answer is up to three miles. At least that's if you're standing on the ground trying to see something else on the ground and nothing else is blocking your view. People can see up to the horizon, which is about three miles into the distance. Because the Earth is round, everything past that horizon line curves out of view. But your sight range changes the higher up you are. So for example, if you go to the top of the Willis Tower in Chicago on a clear day, you could be able to see 40 to 50 miles into the distance. It also depends on how high the object is that you're trying to see. Objects way above the horizon, like the moon, the sun, and stars, are visible even from millions of miles away. All right. Thank you so much for listening. If you feel more informed after listening to this episode, be sure to hit the follow button in your favorite podcast app to stay in the know every day or leave a review so others know to give us a try too. Thank you in advance. We'll be back with another news roundup tomorrow. Until then, have a great day. Hold up. 